Hey everyone, this is Ivana from AL.com and today I am bringing you coverage of the first COVID vaccines that are going to be given here in the central Alabama, Birmingham area. And those are going to be administered here at the VA hospital in downtown Birmingham. Now we know there have been other shots delivered across Alabama today, but this is the first in the Birmingham region, uh, the first vaccines that will be administered for COVID-19. Again, these are those Pfizer vaccines. And um, we're here at the VA again. Now here's the plan. They're gonna deliver these vaccines or inject these vaccines, I should say, to several VA employees and then three POWs here. That's prisoners of war here. Um, two from the Korean War, one from the one from World War II, excuse me. So I'm gonna flip you around now, give you an idea of what this looks like. The VA graciously decided to let us in and document this process. And we do have permission to show you these people who are getting vaccinated. They have all signed uh, consent waivers to let us do that. So this here is the director of the VA and um, she is a veteran as well and she will be one of the hospital employees receiving this vaccine so here is some media um, here and then this gentleman in the blue that is sitting down he is filling out his forms he is one of the prisoners of war former prisoners of war who will be receiving the COVID-19 vaccine again there will be two prisoners of war from the Korean War and one from World War II that are here. I believe the two from the Korean War are 90 and the one from World War II is 100. Um, but we're going to get that information coming in just a little bit. Right now, I just, you know, they haven't exactly started sticking the needles in yet. I just wanted to give you a little bit of a, a look about what's happening here and the setup that they have going on. So again, this gentleman here in the blue filling out his paperwork. Looks like he is getting ready to getting ready to get his vaccine done. So we're gonna to try to bring you over here. And then, and then here again, uh, this in the yellow is the hospital uh, director, I believe, and she's a veteran and she will be receiving her vaccine as well. So this is what the setup looks like here at the VA. They have little curtains and then they have a setup with a couple chairs, a box for the needles, and um, they are nurses and other administrators here for this event, keeping everybody socially distanced uh, for the patients, for their families that wanted to come, and then also for media to get a look at this uh, historic moment. So again, we're waiting on the gentleman to finish up his paperwork, and the hospital director here, she's giving us a some information here. She's talking to our own Amy Yerkinen from AL.com. So we'll have a story on her later, but she's given all that information before she gets her vaccination. So we are just here to watch. Looks like this gentleman's finishing up his paperwork. If y'all have ever been to the doctor, you know, you know how it goes. It takes a little while. I'm going to scoot on up so you can give you a closer yeah. look at the okay. scene here. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, would you like to... <laughs> Now, Amy, uh, in the person in the yellow that's about to get her shot, Amy, yes. tell us about her. So that is Stacy Vasquez. She is the chief executive officer of the Birmingham VA. So she is in charge of everything here. And she just told me that she is, she decided to become one of the first to get the shots here because she wanted to set an example for her staff and ensure them that this was safe, that this is effective. So she wants to, to lead here. Um, She's also an Army veteran. She served for 12 years, and she's been at the VA uh, for 17 years. Wow, so she's the CEO. This is Stacy, the CEO of the VA. She is the lady in the yellow here. She's a veteran and is going to be receiving this vaccine. And then the gentleman next to her is a veteran who will be receiving the vaccine as well. That's correct, a Korean War veteran. Um, now across the state, we've seen medical workers getting uh, the vaccine uh, all morning. This is the first uh, non-medical worker that, that I know of. I don't know for sure, but it, it seems like this first wave was really focusing on medical workers, um, but this is a veteran um, and someone who is in another high-risk category, so they will also be vaccinating him here today. And it looks like we have another veteran coming in here. We'll give you a, a look at what he's doing. Like they're about to get 
so far we have uh, Stacy, who's our CEO here of the Birmingham VA getting her shot. We have also um, two other veterans who are here going to get theirs as well. <laughs> We've got one of our gentlemen getting their jacket off. So we got somebody saying that they wanted to put the shot in the gentleman's right arm. So we're gonna, I'm gonna see if I can get over and give you a look at when that happens. This is Newton Duke. He's one of our Korean POWs. Okay. And this is different media around, so they'll get some different shots if you get your vaccine and stuff like that. So and that's his two dollars back there. So. I'll introduce them again too to make sure you know who they are. All right, Mr. Duke. Are you excited? Yeah. You ready? Yes, sir. I understand. Have you been stuck in your house since March? Have you been stuck at home since March? Yes, you have. I understand. That is Alan Collins from Fox 6. That's, that is him. You're right. Yes, sir. So you served in the Korean War? What branch of the service were you in? Army. Army? <laughs> A proud Army veteran here. All of our veterans are proud. That's true. What was that like? It's serving in the war. Were you a, were you a POW? Yep. Wow. Twenty seven months. Twenty seven months. Wow. Do you remember it well? Yeah. Well. Gosh. You have to tell them. You have to tell them a story about the um, the kid that came running up to you and meeting her later because they're gonna love that story. Oh, you got to tell me now. You right now. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you met the little girl that you that you saved him. Big thing. Once every year, she gives us a big thing in Huntsville. Wow. What does she do up there? Oh, wow. That's a great story. Why don't you tell everybody that? Wow. I guess you haven't gotten to see her this year. You did. Are you really? Oh, Mr. Duke, that's great. Oh, well, I hope after, you know, after this, you'll be able to see her and hug her again. What have you missed most during the pandemic? Yeah. Uh, taking trips is one of my favorite things, too. Where do you like to go? To Gatlinburg or where? Pigeon Forge. Uh, that's one of my favorites, too. And Mr. Duke, I, I hate to ask this, but do you mind telling me how old you are? I'm 90. 90, wow. You're 90? You don't, you're not 90. <laughs> And where do you live? Here in Birmingham? I live in Alabaster. Alabaster, perfect. What made you decide to come and get the vaccine today? 
And you said okay. I got the, yeah, let's get it done. Mm -hmm. Are you proud to be one of the first people that's not a healthcare worker in Alabama getting it? I said, are you proud to be one of the first people in Alabama? I am. I am. Good. Well, Mr. Duke, thank you. You are making history, and we thank you for your service as well. Thank you for talking to us. Good luck. Hopefully, they'll get you get you stuck here soon. <laughs> You're right. Yes, sir. <laughs> So we are just waiting here for these vaccinations to start. We've got Mr. Duke, we've got another. Um, another gentleman who is a POW here as well getting ready and we have a couple of VA employees here um, that are also going to get their shots as well and then we have a couple family members of these uh, veterans who are here to see this event as Mr. Duke said it's historic he's really proud to be one of the first people in Alabama getting this vaccine So you can see now they're kind of just the people here are kind of just letting the uh, these people tell their stories and, and talk at, to media and, and tell us why they want these vaccines um, before they get started. Hey, Mr. Duke, I got a question for you. What do you say to people? who say they don't want to get the vaccine because they don't trust it, but then you're here. What do you want to tell them? You better get it. I mean, what else can you do? I mean, just keep on doing what you're doing now. Get the vaccine and let's go. Yes, sir. Uh-oh, they're about to get started. Thank you, Mr. Duke. Well, if you didn't hear it, Mr. Duke said that he just wanted everybody to get the vaccine because it's better than doing anything. So here, we're going to get an intro. Here. Birmingham Medical Center with COVID going on. Has done everything by Zoom or WebEx or some other online platform. Um, and we're going to get started here. Uh, we're going to start with the
You all are the bravest people I know. I can't think of anyone braver than you all. If anyone's gonna convince people to get the vaccine, it is you all. So please, please, please give us feedback. If you're having any issues with the vaccine, we wanna know about it, we wanna learn. Um, and we are gonna be here to take care of you as we have for many, many years. So I think, Jeff, you have an order that you wanna go and get to start. Okay. First, we're going to start with our youngest veteran. He's not our youngest, he's our oldest veteran, but he's our World War II POW. Chris Quill, and he's signing right here. He's still doing paperwork. Hang on, he's coming. Mr. Quill, come on, I'm going to take you back to that thing through there. And what we'll do is just do one at a time, because we have plenty of opportunity to try to capture as many, much footage as we can get, okay? So come on, Mr. Phil, I'm going to carry you back here to um, our nurse. Mr. Creer, how do you feel about being the first one? I feel honored. I'm surprised, pleasantly surprised. Mm -hmm. we're, we're a little concerned with that. Why were you surprised? We never know so we'll take it. So Why were you surprised that you were chosen to be vaccinated? Well, I got the call. I got you. Uh, Jeff called me. Uh, I, uh, it was just a, kind of a shock, shock, you know. And I kind of thought maybe that uh, I wouldn't be the last one. But I certainly didn't know I'd get it this soon. And 
I'm looking forward to the next one mm -hmm. so I can get out <clears throat> so I don't have to eat my wife's cooking. <laughs> well, let's hope your wife doesn't see this. <laughs> He's ready to go out and eat a restaurant again. I guess crack up there. Once you get the beans and nothing We've got about four places we go to. Full moon barbecue. One of our favorites. <laughs> How old are you, Mr. Creel? How old are you? Don't mind me asking. 94. 94? Wow. You do look awesome. We thank you for your service. What's your secret? Well... <coughs> I drank a pint of whiskey every day, <laughs> smoked two packs of cigarettes uh -huh. every day, and I, I got three young women I take out twice a week. <laughs> to the Cracker Barrel. And if I live to the next, uh, fifth of next month, I'll be 38 years old. I Not tell you. <laughs> One of my favorites. But uh, uh, never smoke, never drink. Uh, and try and live a clean life, work hard, <clears throat> and serve the Lord. Uh, that's what I tell the young people, you know. And <clears throat> and one of the uh, unpleasant things about being my age is uh, not having <clears throat> uh, people I can call on the phone. You know, that I grew up with, they all gone. And, uh, but I know the reason why most of them are, is because of what they picked up while they were young. And <clears throat> I have a brother that's, uh, he's 90 and he's as, he's as active as I am, and we both live the same kind of life. And we lost a, a our middle brother, he uh, he lived the same kind of life, but unfortunately, he died with liver cancer. Uh, it was a strange cancer, and it would take too long to tell you about that. But uh, but he was a fine Christian young man. Okay, are you ready? I'm I'm ready now. Okay. <laughs> if, I, if I faint, y'all. We'll catch you. I promise. <laughs> Uh, I've never seen anybody on television that, that frowned or made any kind of, like they couldn't even feel it. I bet she better not hurt me. You're going to be the first one. <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> you look like you're doing good. Did it hurt? No, that's about like a flu shot. <laughs> How you feel? I feel fine. Congratulations. Congrats. Congratulations. <laughs> I'll be signing autographs. I know. I'm going to be first in line. We'll make you a pass to get out here. All right, we have just seen what uh, quite possibly is the first person in Alabama who is not a healthcare worker to receive the coronavirus vaccine. That was Mr. Creel. He is a World War II veteran and former prisoner of war. And uh, he's 94 years old, he told us he was excited. And uh, after he got the vaccine, said he felt great. And uh, he said the thing he's missed the most since March, if you didn't hear him, what he missed the most was going out to restaurants. Uh, Cracker Barrel is one of his favorites along with Full Moon. So, so, 
That was Mr. Creel, again, possibly the first healthcare worker here, uh, person who is not a healthcare worker, excuse me, here in Alabama to be vaccinated with the Pfizer vaccine. Um, Mr. Creel is gonna hang out here for a little bit. They are asking people who receive the vaccines to sit down for about 15 minutes to make sure they, they don't have any sort of reaction. So we have another uh, gentleman. This gentleman is a veteran of the Korean War, also a prisoner of war. All these gentlemen are prisoners of war and uh, he will get his vaccine next. So let me flip you around. Give you there's a footstool over there. I was going to punch you. Can I squeeze by you, Joe, and get on that side? Yep, you got it. I'm sorry. I'm going to. Oh, that's what I, that's what we were here for. <laughs> you ready to get your vaccine? Taking this shot, so I'm taking this shot. So you can see the difference. So we want you to call us if you have any problems. Like, uh, headache, rashes, fever, anything like that. Do medicine. Um, and they release it to you um, from the safe, but you know, if you still have issues from it, so if you have any problems, just give us a call. Give your doctor a call. If you have any trouble, trouble like trouble breathing, severe pain, anything like that, come to the ER. Take one, one home. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> we won't steal your spot here. We won't steal your spot here. I'll let you have my place if you want to take it. You're ahead of us in line. <laughs> he served in the Korean War. Hey, we all do. Are you nervous? I can imagine. I'm smiling with you. <laughs> okay, so we're going to watch you for about 15 minutes um, just to make sure you're not having any problems, okay? Um, so we'll move out of your way. Give you some cards. Let's hold on to the cards and this information here. So we're going to write the numbers in the game for you. So just hang out with me for about 15 more minutes and you can watch and make sure you have any problems, okay? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna leave his shirt off. <laughs> He's showing his muscles now, I guess. So I'll be lifting up. Hell, get your clothes back on now. Okay, next we're gonna do Newton Dukes. He's one of our Korean World War uh, veterans as well. POW. All right, so now we're on to our third POW here, getting vaccinated. This is Mr. Duke coming out. Bill there to me. <laughs> okay. Did you get Mr. Hale his back, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you much. Hello, Mr. Hello. Duke. How yes. are you? Doing well. How about you? I'm good. I'm good. I'm, I'm precious, and I'll be taking care of you today. Thank you for your service. Thank you, thank you for being here. We're so honored to be taking care of you. Thank you
Are you nervous, Mr. Duke? No. <laughs> you excited? <laughs> people that might have a little bit of hesitancy about the vaccines, what would you tell them? For people that might have a little hesitancy about getting vaccinated, what would you tell them? Uh, come on, let's get this thing. Get all this stuff so we can start back on our lives. Would you like one to Going places without a mask. What are one of the places you're looking forward to going to once everything's back to normal? Spending some time in the mountains? What do you like to do up there? Do you go fishing or do you go eating? What do you do? <laughs> Me too, I get it. Eating and looking. Eating and looking, I get it. There's a lot of stuff to look at up there. Were you surprised that they called you to come get your vaccine? Precious, will you hold up the vaccine for us just so we can get a little close-up shot? Does it say on the other side, COVID-19? There it is. Pfizer COVID-19 vaccine. Thank you. That's the money shot. Mm-hmm. I'm so proud that I can... Are you ready? I'm ready. You're allowed to say ouch. <laughs> done. 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 How'd it feel? How'd it feel? Just barely felt it. Good to know. Not like flu shot. Not too bad. Awesome. You're good, Precious. Okay, so we're gonna let you hold on to this one. You're gonna just watch it for about 15 minutes. Right now, I don't care. Make sure you don't have any problems. All right, if you are just joining us or you missed um, earlier our explanation here, I saw a couple questions flooding in, so I want to just get you up to date really quickly. I'm back here in the corner. We have we are at the Birmingham VA Hospital, which is located in downtown Birmingham off of 7th Avenue South. Uh, I'm here today where the first COVID vaccine, uh, vaccinations rather, are being given out in the Birmingham, Central Alabama area. Now we've got three gentlemen who are all prisoners of war, who are all veterans, who were here today to be the, some of the first uh, non-healthcare workers in the state to get those vaccines. We have Mr. Hale and Mr. Duke, who were Korean War veterans and prisoners of war who were here, and then Mr. Creel, who is a World War II veteran and prisoner of war. We got to see all three of them get their vaccinations, and we got to see, got to talk to all three of them as well. Now we have some healthcare workers who are coming in right now while I'm sitting here. A uh, couple healthcare workers who are going to be getting their vaccinations as well. Now the CEO of the VA, she's a veteran as well, and uh, she started off by telling us that these, uh, especially these gentlemen, these POWs, are more deserving than anybody she knows to receive this vaccine. So she wanted to make sure that they were in line first. We have uh, Mr. Creel, our World War II veteran, is 94, almost 95. Our other two are 90, almost 91. Uh, they all seem to be feeling 
feeling well right now. I had Mr. Duke uh, who I asked, what are you telling people who don't want to get the vaccine, who are skeptical? He said, just do it. Just come on and do it so we can get this over with. Um, and then Mr. Hale, I asked if he was nervous and he told me that uh, prisoners of war are always nervous. That was a little bit one of those reality moments. Um, and he also said that it just felt like a flu shot. He didn't feel bad. And um, then we have Mr. Creel who also said that he was ready to go. He felt good. And uh, we have all of these gentlemen who are here waiting. Uh, the VA wanted them to sit down for a little bit, uh, maybe about 30 minutes after they got those vaccines to make sure they didn't have any kind of side effects. Uh, if you were here watching when they got vaccinated, you heard our nurse Precious uh, was telling the gentleman if they had side effects to report them to call the VA they want to know any side effects that these gentlemen may experience and they said if they were having any sort of severe side effect to come to the emergency room um, I'm looking through some of your comments I had one person ask what type of vaccine this was this was the Pfizer vaccine again this is the Pfizer vaccine being given at the uh, VA here in Birmingham I'm looking through some of your comments to make sure that I look at some of them um, and get all of the info here. And uh, I also had Mr. Duke who said, look, it's better than doing nothing. So um, had to ask them about some people who don't feel comfortable getting this vaccine. Um, now, again, I'm looking for, looking through all of your comments. We do have these gentlemen who said pretty much all said that they were extremely surprised to get the call that they were gonna be getting vaccinated today. Um, and two, if not all three of them told me that they didn't feel that they deserved it first. They, uh, they didn't feel like they should be first in line, but uh, they are and uh, the VA obviously felt like they should. So again, I'm just looking through some of your comments, make sure I get them all. It's kind of hard to see them sometimes on the phone. So if I didn't get them, please leave, uh, please leave me a comment, message me, and I will try to get your questions answered. But we're gonna get here, we're gonna have the full story from you by Amy Yerkinen on AL.com. We're gonna have a full gallery of photos by Joe Songer, and I've got your video coverage. So thank you all for joining us. And uh, thank you all for coming to see three of our veterans, two Korean War, one World War II veteran and POWs get their shots. And uh, again, we're getting some of the VA healthcare workers get them now. So I'm gonna go over there, get some video, and we will have it for you later on AL.com. Thank you so much.